Today, we're going to look at three key techniques that you can build on to bypass web application firewalls. And as usual, we'll first do a little bit of theory and then some labs. And that's all there is to it. So if you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So first up, one of the key things that we need to explore and understand is why are web application firewalls actually susceptible to bypasses? Why don't they just work and block every single malicious payload? Well, first up, we have the complexity of web traffic. Even just considering the usual formats like text, JSON, XML, and multi-part forms, WAFs need to handle all of these consistently. And of course, we can try to attack this handling by obfuscating our payloads in many different ways to make it really difficult to account for every possibility. And speaking of accounting for every possibility, when patterns for WAFs are written, if they are too broad, then we tend to pick up false positives, and if they're too narrow, then they're easy to bypass. Next, we need to consider performance. So inspecting every byte of every request is computationally expensive, and so of course, by default, many WAFs attempt to optimize their performance by limiting the size or depth of inspections, something that we will leverage later on. And finally, the last thing we need to mention before we move into the practical section is inconsistencies in how different technologies process data. A little bit like the old multi-byte SQL injection attack where applications and databases interpret input differently and we can use that difference to evade escaping. WAFs might decode and interpret our traffic differently to the target application. And really, that's enough to get us started. So let's dive into three fundamental techniques that we need to understand to bypass web application firewalls. And of course, going forward, you can build on these to pull off more advanced attacks. Okay, so for our first technique, this is probably one that you already know about. And we're gonna talk briefly about obfuscation just because it is a fundamental technique. But instead of just saying, hey, we can just encode or double encode or add white space or switch something out, what we actually want to think about is instead of just case manipulation and encoding and splitting keywords across different attributes, we want to think about how we approach our testing. And that means taking a payload, figuring out why it's blocked and what's actually happening, and then just targeting that specific part. Of course, another alternative to this is using fuzzing as well. And fuzzing is a really useful technique, but today we're just gonna do it manually because again, we're just doing the fundamentals. So if I CD into labs and come into here and just run our application, here we have a XSS WAF bypass demo. So all we're gonna do is just test this with no WAF on at the moment. So if we just do image source equals X on error equals prompt, we can see that our application is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Nice. Okay, so let me grab this payload once again, delete this, switch on WAF number one, and then try this. And you'll see here that unfortunately our request is blocked. And I wonder if it gives us some message in the console. And here we can see we have error, potential XSS attack detected and request blocked by WAF1. Okay, cool. So what we want to do now is start to break down this payload. Why was it detected? Was it, for example, the open close body tags? Looks like we're still detected, so it probably wasn't those. So we can test something like this. Looks like our less than greater than is not filtered. Was it something like this? We're still detected, so looks like prompt might not be the issue. Maybe it's the on error. So this comes through and then we can see whether it's, let's say, image. And usually to test these, what we would do is we'd create a nice list and then fuzz and then look at the results. But here, what I'm seeing is that actually what's happening is it looks like a combination of words is causing us to be blocked. And this makes sense because, for example, if we just did on error and our firewall blocked like keywords like scripts, for example, then we're going to get a lot of false positives because script is like a common word in the English language. So, of course, what a lot of web application firewalls do is the combination of multiple things. So in this case, 
what I think is actually happening is that the either combination of source and on error or maybe image and on error is actually causing us to be blocked. So what we can then do is we can try with different case types. So on error like this, for example, we can try encoding. We could try all sorts of different things. We could, we could try double encoding. We could try adding comments and white space, etc., etc. But what I'm going to do instead is I think just modify my payload and go on mouse over. That looks like it went through and then we get cross-site scripting. So a relatively simple bypass, but really what I want you to think about is the methodology behind it. Figure out what the web application firewall is looking at by sending lots of different payloads, make a hypothesis and then make a change and you're gonna be more successful. Gain a competitive edge with industry recognized TCM security certifications. Our certifications are acknowledged by leading cyber professionals and organizations worldwide. Equip yourself with credentials that speak volumes in the cybersecurity community. Elevate your professional standing at certifications.tcm-sec.com. Be recognized and be respected. All right, so let's delete that one and move on to WAF number two. And this is quite a cool bypass. A lot of people were talking about this year. And of course, if we just send our payload, we get blocked unfortunately, but what we can do is by default, a lot of web application firewalls don't check payloads over a specific size. So if we make our payload large enough, so let's go into G edit, then we might be able to bypass this. And by default, a lot of web application firewalls won't check things over eight kilobytes, 16 kilobytes, there's two kilobytes, etc., etc. So let's test eight kilobytes. So I've got 10 A's here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's a hundred. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a thousand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten thousand. You can see. If you in the bottom, we have 10,001 characters. Nice. Obviously, we could do this or scripted in something like Python. There are also plugins for things like Burp Suite to easily do this. But in this case, because it's a one off, it's just quicker to do it in Notepad. And here we have our second bypass. So making our payload as large as possible. And as you can see, we have our little broken image down here. All right, and for the third one, so let's set the third web application firewalls. We have some inconsistent interpretation of data, which I mentioned before with things like the multibyte SQL injection attack, which is kind of a rare edge case. And there are a few different situations where this can come up. So for example, in this case, what we're going to do is try and abuse the application behavior to turn our payload from something that the WAF thinks is benign, and then the application is going to change our payload, and then it's going to execute. So if we do some testing of this input here like this, and I just add this and then copy, and then I add some different, for example, special characters to see what the filtering looks like. And then do a little bit of analysis on this. We can see that actually I sent some quotes and the quotes get stripped out. And so what we can do is we can use these quotes to break up our payload. And this is very application specific to then help bypass the web application firewall. So if we try this once more, we can do image source equals X. And I'm just going to add quotes to break up all of these keywords like this we get cross-site scripting. And I think this last one is probably the most powerful because web application firewalls are generally quite generic and have generic rule sets, as unless you have an engineer who's part of an AppSec team who's dedicated to tuning and filtering that specific firewall, which does happen, but only in certain companies. Most companies will just deploy and forget about it until it creates some false positive and some customer starts complaining. Then they'll start paying attention to the web application firewall for about a week and then they'll forget about it again. And more often than not, they'll put it into alert only mode for a little while and then maybe not even switch it back on. So these are all some of the challenges that we have with web application firewalls and some of the fundamental techniques that we can build upon. And all of these look really simple and that's because they are. But of course, in the real world, you're going to have to 
layer things, you're going to have to put techniques together and you're gonna to have to try lots of different things to actually get your bypass to work. But fundamentally, it's not that complicated. And that's it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one.